Okay, welcome to electrical machine lecture. Yesterday we have seen the uh, armature reaction and commutation topic. Now today we are going to discuss the operating characteristic of DC generator. The operating characteristic of DC generator is uh, presented graphically and it is the relation between the excitation EMF that is the actual EMF induced versus field current or terminal voltage versus armature current or internal voltage means uh, the voltage which is going to induce after allowing the or after considering the armature reaction. So we will take one by one. First is the no load characteristic. It is also called as a saturation characteristic. It is also called as a saturation characteristic. It is same or it is the procedure or the method is going to same for all type of DC generator. Either the generator is a separately excited or self excited. It is plotted. Uh, it is plotted or it is represented graphically in between the excite EMF induced EG uh, or uh, no load EMF induced versus the field current field current or excitation current. Whereas internal characteristic is uh, we can represent say it is the internal voltage internal null voltage versus armature current armature current let it is we can represent as EG E0 versus armature current, whereas the external characteristic is plotted between the terminal voltage, terminal voltage versus load current, that is VT uh, versus load current or armature current. So these are the some popular characteristic out of this one is used for the uh, design purposes and no load saturation characteristic or no load characteristic is same means the procedure is same. Their say shape of the characteristic is same for all type of DC generator. The external characteristic is the commercial characteristic because it is terminal versus the load current or armature current. So from this one, we can calculate the, uh, uh, what is the percentage regulation is the change in terminal voltage from no load to full load at constant speed. All these speed, all these characteristic at, at rated constant speed, whatever the speed which is mentioned on the name plate of the machine, it is going to occur, it is going to conduct this characteristic uh, at constant speed. Now first we will see the separately excited DC generator and its first characteristic is the no load characteristic. The in case of DC generator, we come to know that the EMF generated EMF generated EG EG is equal to phi Z N P upon 60 A, P upon 60 A. Okay, so this is the EMF equation for all type of generator. The generator may be a series, it may be a compound, it may be a uh, decision generator. Now out of this one, this parameters Z total number of conductor once we design the machine, once we design the generator, it's remain constant. Number of poles remain constant. Number of armature parallel path is going to remain constant. So we can say that EMF generated is directly proportional to flux into speed. Flux into speed. Or in more general, in more general, we can say that the EMF generated EG at speed is constant because we are going to conduct this test at the constant speed. So EMF is directly proportional to flux. EMF is directly proportional to flux. And what is the flux? 
flux is going to create by the field winding. Say in the previous, uh, okay, uh, in this section, the field flux is going to create by the field current. So we can say that EMF generated is directly proportional to the field current. Now, see in this equation, in this diagram, the armature of the generator, it is at no load condition, means there is a no load on the secondary side. Only we will connect the voltmeter here. So we will connect a voltmeter to measure the voltage. It is a DC voltage. It is going to connect at the uh, armature terminal, whereas the field winding is separately from the D, uh, from the generator from the armature. So it is separately excited DC generator. Now, if you want to conduct the no load characteristic of DC shunt generator, again we will do the same procedure. Means we will disconnect the field winding and connect to the separately excitation from the independent source. So therefore, the characteristic of uh, separately excited DC generator or shunt or self excited DC generator is remain same. Now we come to know that the EMF induced EG is directly proportional to flux, and whereas the EG as as phi is directly proportional to the field current, whatever the field current is that it may be a series field current, it may be a shunt field current, it may be the compound. For the compound generator, the combination of series field and shunt field current. So your EMF generated, you may write as directly proportional to the field current. You can write as the EMF generator is generated is directly proportional to the field current. So at constant speed, if you increase the excitation from its zero value to its rated value, so you will find there is a some increase, there is a some linear part. And after some time, the flux gets saturated. Means if you increase the current, the flux is not going to increase. And hence, the voltage induced in the generator is become constant. Or therefore, it is called as a saturated region. So this much part is called as a saturated, saturated region. Whereas this part is called as a linear part. It is called as a linear part. Now, in this case, if you increase the speed from N1 to N2, the terminal voltage will be more, means the EMF generated will be more because EMF generated is directly proportional to the flux and speed. As long as the speed is not constant, the uh, EMF generated again is directly proportional to the speed. So this is the separately excited DC generator. Now, in case of separately excited DC generator or anything, we will find that the EMF generated at zero current will not be zero, but it having some value of voltage. And that voltage is called as a residual voltage. It is because that even if the field current is zero, the magnetic flux does not go to the zero value, whereas it has some magnetic flux remain present in the magnetic circuit. This is the dissimilarity between the electrical and magnetic circuit. In case of electrical circuit, say for example, in case of electrical circuit, if you just uh, say this is the voltage source for the DC, DC uh, for the electrical circuit and here there is a load, say lamp is there. Now as soon as we switch off the supply, the lamp become dark means the current in the circuit become zero, the current becomes zero. So the current in the circuit will remain present as long as the switch is closed. But in case of the magnetic circuit, if suppose this is the magnetic circuit is there or magnetic electromagnet is there, if you remove the MMF, whatever the current you are supplying, it is going to produce the magnetic flux phi. Now, if you remove this EMF, say you are keeping some switches there and it is open, even removing the MMF or switching off the current, some of the magnetic flux remain present in the magnetic material and that magnetic flux 
present in the magnetic material even if the mmf is removed is called as a residual magnetic flux and this residual magnetic flux is very important in case of dc generator and hence even if the current field current is zero it will induce some voltage in the range of 5 volt 10 volt 15 volts as per the capacity of generator and that voltage is called as a residual voltage it is due to the residual magnetism residual magnetism or magnetic flux which will remain present in the material in the magnetic material or magnetic circuit even if the flux uh, even if the mmf has been removed so this is that this is the open circuit characteristic of the dc separately excited dc generator now even if if you want to know the open open circuit characteristic or no load characteristic of the dc shunt generator what we will do in case of the dc shunt generator we will disconnect the dc shunt winding and we will make it separately excited and the uh, emf induced is going to observe with the help of no load condition across the terminal of generator terminal of the armature so we can say that the separately excited uh, for the no load characteristic or saturation characteristic of all type of generator is going to happen with the same man. So this is the first characteristic. Second is the external and internal characteristic. First is the internal and second is the external characteristic. For finding the external and internal characteristic, it is going to plot between the EMF generated versus armature current. And here it is a terminal voltage versus armature current or load current. So it means that to determine the internal characteristic and external characteristic, it is necessary to have an armature current. So armature current should be there and it is going to happen only when, when we are connecting the generator to the load circuit. So now here we have connected the separately excited generator. It is a separately excited generator. This is the field winding. It is F1, F2 and similarly your A1, A2, whatever the notations are there. It is separately exciting. If you increase the current, the voltage is going to occur and that when the terminal voltage, when the induced voltage become equal to the rated terminal voltage, we will connect the load. So here load is that and it is going to deliver the current. So this is the generator. Now at no load condition, when there is a no load across the uh, armature terminal, this is the terminal voltage. So this is the this is the terminal voltage. Say it is 230 volt for our simplicity. This is 230 volt. It is the no load voltage. So we have just drawn at no load current. This is no load current. The no load terminal voltage is 230. So this is the no load terminal voltage. But as soon as we connect the load and it is delivering the current, so the current is going to deliver in the armature circuit, say it is IA. So the terminal voltage, we know that EG EMF generated is equal to VT plus IA into RA plus brush drop or say plus armature reaction drop. So how the armature reaction drop? As we have discussed that because of the armature reaction, the total magnetic flux over the periphery of armature get decreases. And there is a two effect. One is the distortional effect. Second is the uh, demagnetizing effect. Because of these two effects, the total flux over the armature get decreased. And we know that the EMF generated is directly proportional to the flux. So as the flux decreases, EMF also decreases. So the EMF also get decreases. So this is going to, we want to know what is the EMF, what is the dip, drop in voltage across the terminal. But what we are doing, we are measuring the terminal voltage. So therefore we are able to draw the terminal voltage versus armature current. So as the armature current increases or load current increases, the terminal voltage is start decreasing and this is the drop or this is the characteristic which shows the terminal voltage or this is called as the external characteristic. So this is VT, this is VT and this is the EG, EMF generated. First line, B line is the EMF generated and VT is the terminal voltage. Now, if you plot the armature drop, say we are neglecting 
what is the drop in the field winding uh, what is the drop in the brushes only we are considering the armature resistance drop armature resistance drop which is equal to iara isn't it so if you plot the iara armature current and resistive and it is a linear uh, element so it will gives the linear characteristic with respect to the with respect to the current so this shows i a r a drop as i a r a is nothing but the it is going to measure in volt so this is your terminal this is y axis is the magnitude of voltage so i a into r a current multiply by resistance current multiply by resistance so it will gives the resistive drop so if you subtract say for example this is your 8 mm if you subtract 8 mm from the line b that is the emf generated we will find we will find this point say we will find this point at this current say this current the uh, terminal voltage uh, the resistive drop is say 6 volt and it is in the centimeter is point 6 centimeter so if you plot this one and hence this line represent the emf it is called as a internal voltage it is called as a internal voltage and hence we can represent as a ez so the drop is called as a sorry this drop from this one we will uh, calculate from the terminal voltage this point some second terminal voltage this point so first drop is called as a ohmic drop so it is a i square r a drop and the remaining part is nothing but the armature reaction drop because it is not possible to calculate or to measure the armature reaction drop directly we can measure the terminal voltage versus armature current so we have measured and we have plotted the terminal voltage yes now once we know the terminal voltage we know the armature resistance with the help of uh, multimeter measurement of resistance of the uh, armature winding with the help of multimeter and we can calculate the armature resistance drop once we plot the armature resistance drop uh, with versus the current the same amount of distance it is subtracted from the terminal voltage so this is subtracted from the terminal voltage and this subtraction for every point say this is uh, say 5 ampere this is 10 ampere this is 15 ampere this is 25 ampere so we are going to sub mark the line and if you make as one line this voltage is called as a internal voltage e0 this voltage is called as a external voltage which is vt and this is your no load emf generated now this gap is nothing but the armature resistance drop whereas the remaining part is called as a armature reaction drop so we in this case it is possible to separate the armature re reaction drop and ohmic resistance drop okay so this characteristic is called as a no load characteristic this called as a internal characteristic and the armature uh, the terminal voltage versus armature current is called as a external characteristic of the uh, separately excited dc generator so this is the uh, internal and external characteristic of separately excited dc generator now critical field resistance what do you mean by critical field resistance it is very much important for the self excited generator like dc shun generator dc series generator dc compound generator and what is its significance the significance is that we have to calculate or we should know what is the value of critical field resistance and whatever the resistance we are adding in the field winding for controlling purpose it should be less than the critical value of the resistance and it is going to plot with the help of open circuit open circuit characteristic or no load characteristic open circuit characteristic the meaning is that the armature terminal is open open so here the armature terminal is open and we are going to excite with the help of 
separately excitation independent voltage source and we find the some open circuit characteristic or no load no load saturation characteristic now same characteristics is going to use to determine the critical resistance of the field winding for the dc chan generator or compound generator now say this is the open circuit characteristic OCC, open circuit characteristic or no load saturation characteristic. In case of no load saturation characteristic, it is quite clear that it is quite clear that it is quite clear that this is the linear part of the open circuit characteristic and here the magnetic flux or the magnetic circuit is start saturating and because of this saturation uh, even though if you increase the field current we does not find any change or there is a small change in the emf induced so this is your emf induced eg and this is your field current ir this is the field current ir so this is one open circuit at at constant speed constant speed now, if suppose you draw a line which passes here, lay, the line name is resist R1. Okay. Now, if you plot or if you're going to determine the slope of the line, what is the slope of line here? This is the voltage. This represents the voltage EG, isn't it? So, R1, the slope of R1 is equal to. EMF generated say this from V1 and this is V2. So it is V2. Okay. So it is V2 minus V1. It is going to measure in the voltage. It is going to measure in the voltage. Whereas this field current F1, IF1 and IF2, IF2. So it is divided by IF2 minus IF1, which is going to measure in the current. So voltage divided by current is nothing but the resistance. It is nothing but the resistance. So it means that it means that this line represents the resistance or the slope of the line represents the resistance. So here this is the R1 line. Now for the R2 line, what is going to happen? For the R2 line, if you take the same value of voltage and this current, so the voltage is will be more as compared to the current because the current, uh, the difference of this value will be small. So current is going to be smaller and we can say that your R2 is greater than R1. Isn't it? Similarly, for this line, if you plot the or determine the slope of the line. So again, the voltage is more and whereas the current is small. So here the R3 or the line 3, the slope of this line 3 is greater than the R2. It means that if you move the line from left, uh, from right to left, the resistance is gone increasing. So in this case, the resistance is the resistance of R3 is highest one as compared to the R2. Okay. So this is the meaning. So R3 is R3 is greater than R2. Okay. And so on. Let now we can say that if the resistance is more the generator is going to fail to excite the EMF. So it does not produce any EMF uh, even though it having the residual magnetism. So this is the residual voltage. Already we have discussed what is the residual voltage and residual magnetism, residual magnetic flux. Even if we remove the MMF, some of the magnetic, magnetic flux remain present and this is the major main uh, say uh, dissimilarity between the electrical circuit and magnetic circuit. As soon as we switch off the current, switch off the uh, supply, 
the current in the electrical circuit becomes zero. Whereas if you remove the MMF, if you remove the current in the magnetic circuit, some of the magnetic flux will remain present even if the supply is going to zero, wasn't it? So uh, if the field winding resistance is more than that, uh, say uh, slope of this line, the generator is going to fail to generate the voltage. So uh, the critical field resistance is defined as the maximum value of field resistance, the generator will just self excite at a given speed is called as a critical field resistance. Okay. Suppose this is the DC shunt generator. This is the DC shunt generator. DC shunt generator. The shunt winding is there. It having some, some value. Definitely it is more as compared to the armature resistance much more because it is connected in parallel. So this is RSH and this is your RA, it is going to deliver the armature current at no load condition. Say there is a no, uh, no uh, load is there. What happened because of this residual voltage, this 10 to 15 volt, it is going to circulate the current in the field winding ISA, a small value of current. This small value of current produces some more magnetic flux and hence it will increase the EMF because you are EMF generated EG is directly proportional to flux. So it is going to strengthen the magnetic flux. Because of this residual voltage, it drives some current in the shunt field winding. If suppose the resistance of the shunt field winding is such a greater value, it does this small value of voltage that is 10 to 15 volt is not possible to deliver the current in the shunt field winding. And when it is not delivering the current in the shunt field winding at no load condition, the shunt field winding does not produce the magnetic flux and hence the voltage. So generator is going to fail to produce the terminal voltage. And this therefore, the resistance of the shunt field winding should be smaller than the critical field resistance, which is the uh, tangent to the open circuit value. So the maximum value of the field resistance that the generator will just self excite at the given speed is called as a critical field resistance. The slope of air gap line is the value of critical field resistance. So this is the air gap line. The air gap line indicates that if there were no saturation, the characteristic open circuit characteristic is just like a this line, a straight line that is a linear one. But because of the saturation in the magnetic circuit, the curve become the curve tilted and become constant. Now the speed at which the DC generator just failed to excite or failed to build up the voltage with no external field resistance is called as a critical speed. The one more important thing is that during this one, your speed should be critical value, more than the critical value. If the speed say, for example, the speed of the generator rated speed is 1500 RPM. But if you are running the generator at 750 RPM, it does not uh, produce the voltage. Even if the critical field resistance is smaller, no external resistance will be there in the field winding. Therefore, the, the speed should be a critical, more than the critical value. Then and then the generator is going to develop the uh, terminal voltage for the self excited DC shunt generator. Now, this is the second point is the self-excited DC generator. For the self-excited DC generator, DC series generator, in case of the DC series generator, armature current IA and series field current ISE is same. So if at no load condition, means the generator, it is not connected with the load. What happened? Even though uh, in this case, armature current will be zero because the load current is zero. There is a no load at the terminal, hence the current in the series field winding also zero and it produces a small voltage. So this is the small voltage is going to produce. It is because of the residual magnetism. But and generator does not produce the more voltage. To obtain the terminal voltage, it is necessary that the generator should be connected with the load. So it should be connected with the some load, a small load and it should start decreasing. So it will give the uh, it will give the say 
uh, rising characteristic. If you increase the load, the voltage also increases. If you increase the load, the load increases, the voltage terminal voltage or EMF generated is increased and reaches to its rated value. So if you are going to plot, we are going to obtain such value. That is the terminal voltage. This is the VT. Terminal voltage is there and armature current is there. Now, if you add the resistance in the EMF generated, that is EMF generated is equal to VT plus IA RA, isn't it? So you will get the value E0. We will get the value E0 instead of EG. So this is the internal voltage E0. Now, if you add the one more parameter, that is uh, brush drop, brush drop, uh, sorry, uh, armature reaction drop, then we will get the, the parameter E G. So therefore, this is the terminal voltage. If you add the uh, ohmic resistance, ohmic resistance, again, we will calculate the same way. This is the ohmic resistance. As the current increases, armature resistance drop also get increases. So see IARA drop. And if you add this IARA drop in the terminal voltage, we will get the E0. This is your terminal voltage, Vt. And this is your armature resistance is E. Now, if you increase more current, instead of increasing the terminal voltage, the terminal voltage start decreasing. So we can say that this part or this characteristic up to this one, this characteristic is a stable characteristic. It is the stable region. And if you increase the load by which it is increasing the current, now the terminal voltage start decreasing and the voltage collapse. So there is a voltage collapse. So this is the unstable, unstable operation of DC series generator. So this is the internal external characteristic of DC series generator. Now, DC shunt generator. Again, we will see the internal characteristic and external characteristic because the no load characteristic is similar to the separately excited DC generator. So here, this is the DC generator. Uh, this is the armature winding. It is connected with the, uh, uh, some. Uh, uh, this is connected with the shunt field winding. In addition to this shunt field winding, a rheostat is added to control the uh, fluxes at the terminal voltage. So it is going to measure the terminal voltage Vt, isn't it? This is going to measure the armature current or IL load current. This is the shunt field current. Now, once we start the DC generator at a constant speed, rated speed, a small residual, residual voltage will be there. And by adjusting the rheostat, we will obtain the no load terminal voltage. So this is the EG, no load terminal voltage EG, say 230 volt. Okay. Now, once we start uh, loading the generator one by one, this one load, this is second load, this is third load. So what happened? It will draw more current. As it will draw more current, there is a more voltage drop across the armature resistance. Some voltage drop is going to occur in the brushes and some voltage is going to across the uh, say. Uh, armature uh, reaction drop. So your EG is equal to VT plus IA RA plus armature reaction drop. So if you write this equation oppositely, that is, or you can write as terminal voltage is equal to EG minus IA RA minus armature reaction drop, armature reaction drop. See, this is the terminal voltage. So we are going to measure the terminal voltage. It is not possible to measure the EMF induced with the help of voltmeter. Okay. So what we are doing, we are going to measure the terminal voltage. Means this is the voltage which we have measured with the help of voltmeter. This value we have measured with the help of voltmeter. And this nothing but the terminal voltage VT. And this is the armature current. Similarly, if you draw the IARA drop for particular value of the current, this point, what is the voltage drop, this point, or what is the voltage drop by measuring the resistance of the armature circuit. Now, if you subtract or add, if you add terminal voltage plus IARA, 
So terminal voltage plus IARA, you will get the, this characteristic and this characteristic is nothing but the E0. Internal voltage versus armature current or internal volt voltage versus load current. Now, if what is the gap? This gap definitely shows that it is the armature reaction drop. Means we are not going to calculate the armature reaction drop. We are able to calculate the EMF generated. We are able to calculate the terminal voltage. If you subtract the terminal, subtract the resistive drop, which drop is remaining? Armature reaction drop is remaining. So in this way, we can estimate the armature reaction drop. We can estimate the ohmic resistance. So the terminal voltage versus load current is the external characteristic. EMF gen, uh, internal voltage versus uh, load current is called as the internal characteristic after allowing the armature reaction drop and the actual EMF generated versus no versus uh, uh, versus field current is the no load characteristic of DC shunt generator. So today we will stop here our discussion and next time we will see the characteristic of DC compound generator with the same uh, internal characteristic and external characteristic. Thank you.